I was detained. Fui arrestada. My family was intimidated. She died while in detention. I was fired from my work. Attacked. Followed. Arrest. As a defender, engaging with the UN can take many forms. It can include submitting written information, speaking to a UN representative, attending a training, or attending the UN itself. I have previously submitted written information on the human rights situation in my country to UN treaty bodies and the Universal Pediatric Review. Recently, en route to Geneva to attend the UPR of my country, I was not allowed to leave my country and was informed I had a travel ban. Something that a number of us find particularly troubling at the moment is the trend of, of an increase in reprisals carried out against human rights defenders in many parts of the world. We, we believe that the majority of cases of intimidation and reprisal are carried out by agents of the government, security forces, intelligence. What is crucial is that human rights defenders can be heard and it is precisely because the voice of those human rights defenders can be so powerful that there is an effort on the part of many governments to silence them. We've received information about a large number of cases, but we believe that they are just the tip of the iceberg. There are a vast number of cases that, that are not, we're not told about because people are intimidated. And that's the connection to why they need to go to the UN. It's precisely because domestically there's no effective, meaningful avenues for redress for the defenders and for citizens. We need to make sure that the individual cannot be made to pay the ultimate price. And they need to have a platform where they can go and call for greater pressure and international support. One really current and serious example is lawyer Jiang Tianyong, uh, who was a very active a rights defense lawyer, but it appears that when he met with the Special Rapporteur on Extreme Poverty, it was after he met with the Special Rapporteur that he was then subsequently picked up, detained, and then uh, is now convicted of inciting state subversion. We consider the voice of civil society to be of paramount importance. In many instances, they give a far more reliable and a far more accurate account of the true human rights situation than governments do. What's striking to us is the extraordinary courage of so many human rights defenders in standing up and again and again bravely pointing out the shortcomings of their government and highlighting the violations that have taken place. At the end of the day, human rights should be about the human beings who are asserting these rights. States and all the other stakeholders must stand up and hold the line on international standards. And we must also hold the line on individuals. Every individual life counts. States are responsible for protecting the right of everyone to communicate with the UN, free from intimidation and reprisal. Governments must not only stop carrying out reprisals, but call out other governments when they do. Ensuring this becomes a reality is our collective responsibility.